Hi everyone, welcome back to Lola's Frugal Life Podcast. Today, I was really excited to record this episode. Well, I am really excited (laughs) to record this episode because today we're going to talk about frugal ways to find your next read. And I love talking about reading and just like different little tips on how to get books and finding time to read books and all things about that. So I think that reading is a really great frugal activity. It's one of my favorite things to do for fun and it really doesn't cost me anything to do it. I know reading definitely can be expensive if you're purchasing a lot of books on a frequent basis, but with technology now, it's so easy to get books for free um, from the library without even having to take the time to venture out and go borrow the physical copies. I know some people really prefer physical copies, but I actually really love that everything is just on my phone or on the iPad and um, I don't have to like store books or um, you know have them piled up or go bring them to the library go return them and all that kind of stuff so to me I love um, not having physical books but I know a lot of people really like to have those physical books in their hand so it gets a little bit more difficult with saving money um, there's not as many options I guess with saving money if you want physical books um, without going back and forth to the to the library but anyway so my favorite way to get books for free is by using the Libby library app through that app you can get books um, you can get audio books and then you can get regular digital um, type books like I call them like Kindle type books um, you know books that you read on a device um, and like I said audio books so you can get it um, that you can read it in um, the app itself in the Libby app or you can also read them using the Kindle app if you prefer that app over the app that comes in the Libby app and I realize probably most of you are already aware of um, using the Libby app or overdrive app which is actually either has been or is about to be discontinued or already has been discontinued and that's just going to merge over to Libby. So I believe most libraries at this point are using the Libby app. But like I said, I'm sure most of you are probably already aware of that, but I always feel the need to share it because I still occasionally come across people who have no idea about using the apps to get access to library books. And that was actually when I got back into reading, when I discovered that I could um, get the library app and get all these books for free. And I always have books going, like there's no shortage of titles that I wanna read that are, that are available through the library app. So um, the thing is, of course, that you do need to have a library card though in order to access the books through the app, but it only takes one visit to get that set up if you don't already have one or if you owe money like I did. I think I owed like 30 cents or something and I just went into the library, I got it cleared up and I was all good. And then if you have um, like other neighboring counties near you, um, you can often get a library card from them also. Like for example, the county that I live in has an agreement with the county that's right next to us that you can get a free library card from that county if you're a member of the county that we live in. So I have a library card for both um, county libraries and by doing that, um, it got me access to many more books because in the Libby app, you can put in multiple library cards. So I'm able to um, find books that weren't available at one library, I've often found in the other one. So it's really helpful to um, access the multiple libraries if you have that option. And you know, of course, depending on where you live, it's possible that your library might not offer this service or it might have a very limited selection of books. So another option you do have is if you search online, um, there are libraries across the country that will allow non-residents to pay an annual fee to join their library. So depending on what that fee is, if you know, you're doing something like, um, I think it's called like Kindle Unlimited, or if you're doing like Audible or whatever other service you might be paying for, you should maybe take a chance, take a um, shot and look into it because it might wind up being more cost effective to pay the fee to join the library as a non-resident than what you might be paying for another book service. Now, of course, with the library, you do need to have patience to take advantage of the savings um, because often library books that are in high demand 
um, often have a wait time for them. So like you might have to place a book on hold in the app and it might say, you know, it'll be ready in two weeks or five weeks or 13 weeks or whatever, um, depending on how popular the book is and how many copies of that book the library has in digital format, the longer, um, you know, will depend on um, how long you're gonna have to wait for that book. So you do have to have some patience if you wanna be able to get the books for free. Um, but either way, I have never had trouble finding plenty of other things to read or listen to in the meantime while I'm waiting for those more popular titles. Um, and plus, when it does become available, it makes it more exciting because I'm like, oh, I've been waiting for this for three weeks. I'm so excited I finally got it or, you know, whatever. Um, so it just it's just kind of fun. Um, but the only challenge I have had with um, popular books is like the Kindle type books, like not audio books, but the I don't know what you call them. I call them digital books usually, but I guess audio, audio books are kind of digital books too. I don't know. But like the Kindle type books that you have to actually read, not listen to. Um, I have had trouble with those um, depending on the length of the book or depending on how busy I am that time when I get to borrow it um, in finishing them within the 14 days that we get to borrow the book from our library. I would think most libraries are probably two weeks, but I don't know if that's standard or not. Um, but the thing is, is with books that are not in high demand, you can just renew the book as many times as you want at the end of the 14 day period, at least in our library system, you can, so you could just continue reading it. Um, but with the popular titles, it most, mostly will never let you, um, renew it if there's other people waiting for it. And if it's really popular, you could have like several weeks um, in between when you have to stop reading and then start reading again. So it kind of made me feel like I was under pressure to, um, to, to finish the book in enough time. And I usually never was able to because I just don't read that quickly. And I don't always have a lot of time to sit and, and read for long enough periods to get a whole book done in 14 days. Actually, I usually never do. There's been a few that I've got done in time, like ones that I just really could not stop reading I couldn't put it down and I have actually gotten through a couple of titles in that 14 days but more likely than not I do not so what I have started doing for those more popular books is um, putting them on a list um, and trying to get them like purchase them from Amazon um, using um, by earning these no rush digital credits through Amazon and then purchasing the books that way that way I can take my time reading them. And I'll get into those digital credits in a minute. Um, but so what, yeah, so what I've been doing though is with the library app. So I'm focusing on audiobooks through the library app. So anything I can get as an audiobook, I'm getting as an audiobook for free through the library app. And then if there's any digital books that I want to borrow that are not a book that is has a current hold, that it's one I could just borrow and renew and renew whenever I need to, I will get those th through the library also. But if it's something that's like very popular right now and I know there's gonna be a hold, I don't even bother to borrow it through the library. I just put it on a list and then um, plan to purchase it through Amazon, Amazon but purchase it for free. I'll, like I said, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, Okay, so another thing that I recently learned about is Amazon First Reads. And I, sometimes I feel like when I'm doing this, I'm sure there's some of you out there like, you didn't know about this stuff, but no, I just recently learned about Amazon First Reads and I just recently learned about the Amazon No Rush digital credits. Not that I just learned about them, but I just started using them. I kind of never really put much thought into them before. Um, so anyway, the Amazon First Reads. So I just learned that you can get, um, books for free if you're well, okay so technically they're not free because you do have to have an Amazon Prime membership which you're paying for but if you already have that you can um, join something called first reads on Amazon there's no cost joining just means that you'll get um, an email each month that will let you know it's time to choose the books your, your free book and it'll show you the books that you can pick from. You don't just get to pick any book and get it for free. They'll give you, um, they'll show you there's maybe like six books or eight books or something you could choose from and you can pick one for free. And once you pick it, you own it. It goes into your Kindle library and that book is now yours. It's not like a trial or for a period of time. It's a book you get to keep. Um, so the thing is, is that um, like this month I got two free books last month I think was was two 
one maybe no it was one I think and then you got like a credit for like two more free ones I don't remember exactly how it worked I only just joined it two months ago I never knew about it I saw it mentioned on a book club that I'm in uh, in face on Facebook and I was like how did I not know about this so I got a couple of books that I think seem like they'll be um really good books um I haven't read any of them yet because I've still been working through a book that I'm reading um, on my Libby app that I've been renewing over and over and over again. It's not super popular title right now. So, um, it's like an older book. So I've been able to take the time to read it and I keep renewing it every, every 14 days. Um, so once I finish that book, I will start reading the other books, but you're, I, I took my time and I read reviews and, um, I feel like the ones I picked are going to be really good choices for books that I like to read. So, they're pretty, they seem like pretty good books. I mean, they're, of course, it's not like anything that's like super like, you know, brand new. I mean, they're new, they're new books, but it's not like anything that's like a super, you know, um, really, really crazy popular title, like, you know, being heavily marketed. It's not those types of books, but they are new books and they're, um, they seem to be like what I think will be really good books. So anyway, um, that's Amazon first read. So if you go on Amazon and you just type in the search bar, just like as if you were searching for a product and just type in first reads, um, you'll see, and you can click on the information and it'll give you, um, how to sign up for that. Then the other one, which I know a lot of people know about this already too, but I had never been taking advantage of it was the Amazon no rush credits. Now, again, you do need to be an Amazon prime member, um, to take advantage of this, but I am like pretty much obsessed with this right now for getting free books um, by getting these Amazon no rush shipping credits. So in the past, I had seen the um, option to choose a shipping for no rush and to get like a dollar digital credit or whatever the, you know, the, the offer was at the time. And for some reason, I always ignored it because it never occurred to me that those credits could be used to purchase Kindle books or rent or buy movies. I just, I just never really thought about it. I don't know why, like it never crossed my mind that I could be doing that sometimes. I guess I always had this thought in my mind that I always needed everything to be rushed to me. But then um, I was talking to a girl at work and she was telling me how she was like buying books and renting movies and everything with these digital credits. And I was like, why have I never tried this? And when I started um, looking at the things I was buying and thinking like, do I really need this right away? There was so many times that I did not need it, like, in a day. I did, you know, things I was purchasing that I did not need to have the next day. And um, the credits, once you get them, they can be saved up um, to purchase, to make purchases. And they don't expire for several months. So, like, the ones that I got in December, I think they expire at, like, the end of March. Um, I'm kind of new to this, like I said, so I don't know, like, if that's always the case or whatever. But, um it's, you can accumulate them and make purchases with them. So, um, I, I, the one thing that's good though is, and I, and I think probably why I never, um, really looked into doing it. What I didn't realize is that the no rush shipping is often only a couple of days later than the regular shipping, like the regular prime shipping. And when you go to make the purchase, when you choose that shipping option, um, it will tell you the estimated date just like it does for the regular Amazon shipping. So like it might say, you know, overnight prime or whatever is going to be like, say, um, January 14th, but then maybe it'll say like no rush shipping is going to arrive on the 18th. So you'll be like, oh, well, that's only like four days different and I'm going to get this extra money and I really don't need this right away. So you can make an educated decision based on the estimated time frame. Um, it's not like you just say no rush shipping and then it comes whenever, like you'll still be able to know approximately when it's going to come. Um, and not all items offer digital credits, um, but those that do have various ranges on the credits. The lowest I've seen is a dollar and the highest I've received so far is $4 per item. So like say for example, if you order two items and both of them have a $4 no rush shipping credit, you'll get $4 per each item. So you would get $8 for that. Um, so I found a lot of things, especially during when I was doing holiday shopping that had pretty high dollar um, credits. Um, but yesterday I ordered new dog beds for my dog. So I got two beds and there was a $1.50 digital credit offer for each bed. So I did not need those beds to come immediately because they already have dog beds. We just wanted to replace them. So um, I chose the no rush shipping 
and I'll get $3 to put towards a book purchase. So what I've been doing is every time I want to read one of those books in a digital format rather than audio, um, and it's a very popular book that's, that takes a long time to, um, to get through the library, through the hold, and then plus, like I said, I'm always worried that I will not be able to finish it in time, and then I'll have to wait to get it again. Any books like that, I have created a list in Amazon called Books I Want to Read, and then I just choose from that list, and I've been purchasing them, and I have already purchased five books that were on my list from from the um, digital credits. And it's any books, like these are all really popular book titles that I purchased so far. It's not like, you know, you'll only have a selection that you can purchase with the digital credits. You can purchase any books like that you would be able to purchase on Amazon that have a Kindle format. It has to be digital book because they're digital credits, but any um, like Kindle type book that you could purchase on Amazon, you can purchase with the credits. And you can also use them like I said, to rent or purchase movies. So like during um, Christmas time, one of my daughters wanted to um, rent this movie, this Christmas movie for us to all watch. And um, we got it for free because I had digital credits. So we just rented it. I don't know what it was, three or $4, probably closer to four. I, I don't remember what it cost to rent a movie, but whatever it was, we didn't have to pay anything for it because I had the digital credits. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. We have these credits and yeah, we can rent this movie. And um, so that has been really cool. I've really, really been enjoying um, doing that. Oh, and another thing too is that when you purchase the book with credits, like if you purchase a Kindle book on Amazon, you get, um, you accumulate like points. And then every time you get 300 points, you get $3 towards another purchase. I'm, I'm guessing towards a book purchase. I'm not, I don't really totally remember how that works. I think it was for books. Um, but anyway, um, so when you purchase books, with the digital credits, it still gives you points as if you purchase them with cash. So I'm just like right now 10 points short of getting another $3 towards a book um, that I've been buying with all free money. So it's, it's really kind of fun and exciting and I've really been loving that lately. Another thing I just wanted to talk about was finding time to read because I often hear people say they just don't have time to read. And I used to say it myself all the time. And for the longest time, I didn't read anymore because I thought I was just too busy for it. So in 2020, I decided I really wanted to get back into reading. So I had set a goal for myself at the new year um, to read 20 books, which at the time seemed like a huge amount of books to me since I had not been reading at all. So I set up the goal in the Goodreads app. If you're not familiar with that, it's a really popular book app. It has reviews, you could track your reading, you can um, create like a to be read list. There's, there's just a lot of things you can do in there. It's all centered around books and, and reviews and, and um, lists, you know, they have like, you know, top 10 in nonfiction or top 10 in fiction or what's what, what people are reading this week or whatever a lot, you know, it's that type of an app. But anyway, I, I got that app and I set it up. I set up my goal um, to read 20 books. And it turns out that I wound up reading 40 books in 2020. So I exceeded my goal by 20 books, which was crazy because all I had to do was put a little bit of effort into starting to read and I was, and I found time. Now I do have to say, I read a lot of audio books and I count them as reading them because who's like going to say that I can't count them? I mean, there's no one out there that set the rule. I think audiobooks count. I was torn when I first started tracking if I should be counting audiobooks because I felt like I didn't have to sacrifice the time to sit down and make more time to read. I was able to do other things while I was listening, but there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, who has time to, I mean, maybe some people do and that's great if you do, but I don't have time to sit there and read most books. I do read physical, not physical, but like digital books where I'm reading words on a page, but I would never get through enough, like the number of books that I hear about that I want to be able to read. I'd never be able to get through that many if I was just reading with my eyes. I often need to be multitasking. Um, You know, like I said, there's many times I sit down and I'll read for a little bit, but most of the time I need to be listening to an audiobook while I'm doing something like, you know, folding laundry or or cleaning or doing dishes or whatever. And um, so I definitely always make time to listen to audiobooks. 
Um, but oh, what I what I also wanted to mention too is with the, go back to the Goodreads app. So I love the Goodreads app for tracking the books that I've read, tracking against my goal. And I also like it because I like to have a log of the books that I've read because so many times I might forget that I um, that I read something. And then if I'm you know looking for new books to read, I, I'll go back in and I'll just check and see if I read it. Because sometimes I just forget the title of a book, you know, forget the name of a title of a book or whatever, and I might forget that I read it. So it's kind of a good resource just to have a log of all the books that I've read and I can always go in there and access it. So anyway, back to the reading goal. So like I said, I was not reading at all. I went from zero to setting a goal of 20 and I wound up reading 40 books that, that year in 2020. And each year I've increased my goal by a little bit. And in 2022, I had a reading goal of 50 books and I, en and I ended up reading 73 books. I do not intend to keep increasing my goal each year. It's not really about the number of books that I'm reading for me. The reason that I set a reading goal is because I like to see how many books I was able to read without it really seeming like I was putting too much time into it because I really love to read and by setting a goal, it kind of helps me make sure that I'm taking the time to read. So it's it's hard to explain. Like It's not like I'm trying to make sure I read a certain number of books, but I, I don't want to not be reading because I love to read. So just by setting a goal, it kind of helps keep me on track. And, and you know maybe if I'm falling behind, I'll be like, wow, I really haven't taken much time to read um, what what's out there that I, that I want to listen to. But that really doesn't happen anymore. I always have multiple audiobooks waiting in the queue in my app. I always have a digital book going. Um, I'm always listening to something in the car, like I said, while I'm cleaning. Um, and then, you know, I'll, I'll read like on my phone, um, sometimes on my lunch break at work, maybe I'll read just for like a half hour. Even if you read during a lunch break, 15 minutes a day, you, four times, you can read an hour a week. Like you can, you can usually find little bits of time where you can read and especially using audiobooks. So I know that we're all super busy and it can definitely feel like there's no time to read, but even if you don't have any time to sit down and you haven't really tried audiobooks, give them a try. They're so fun and they do count as reading. You're still listening to the story and absorbing the information, so there's no reason why listening to audiobooks does not count as reading. Another um, thing I wanted to talk about is do not be afraid to DNF. So DNFing is did not finish. It means you did not finish the book. So depending on your personality, once you get into a book, it can be really difficult to not finish it, even if you're not enjoying it. So I often struggle with this because I keep thinking, what if something is just about to happen and I'm going to miss out by giving up on this book? This is especially difficult for me when the book has amazing reviews. I feel like maybe if I just hang in there a little bit longer, uh, uh, something's going to happen. I'm really going to like it. But the reality is, is that there are so many books out there that we will really enjoy and our time is limited. And if we really value it, we don't want to waste time on reading something we're not enjoying reading when there could be something else we could be reading that we really love. So if you're not enjoying a book, be brave and DNF it. Find something that you really love instead. It's not worth wasting your time. Like think about how many books there are out there. And if you really love reading, like you're giving up time on something you might really be enjoying to, to just to try and finish something that you, that you don't even care about, <laughs> that you don't even care to finish. So it's totally okay to um to start a book and just say i'm just not really into this and then just kind of um get out of it say i don't i don't like this anymore click return stop reading it whatever you need to do um one last topic i wanted to talk about really quick is just how to figure out what to read next so if you're anything like me you might find that half of the fun about reading is figuring out what to put on your list of books you want to read there are so many great places to find ideas for great books. One of my favorite ways to find new books is by listening to the podcast, What Should I Read Next? 
by Ann Vogel. I just love her podcast. She is just so, like, she just loves reading so much that I just find it fun to, like, listen to her and hear her talk about um, reading and books and, and, you know, some of her favorites. And she has guests on and she, you know, selects um, books for them. So I just, I've so often gotten so many um, different ideas on there for things that I wanted to read. Um, but there's a lot of different podcasts about books and they're fun. People, re- they review books, they'll share their favorites. And so that's definitely one way that you can um, get ideas if you're not sure like what you even want to read. I'm also in a Facebook book club that I really love that's really active and people are always posting on there about what they're currently reading, um, asking for people's thoughts on books and I, I've gotten a lot of information from there and I've gotten some really good books to put on my list to read. Um, and what's kind of neat too is that um, you know it is good to get to see um, other people's opinions on books because sometimes there's been um, books that everybody says is the, like this is such a great book and I love this book and and I'll get the book and think like I just am not into this book I don't I don't get it like I don't I just don't love it and then I'll see someone else in the Facebook group give one of those unpopular opinions and say they didn't like the book either and it just kind of makes you feel like okay it's not just me um, it's just kind of good to hear other people out there talk about books and give their opinions if that's something you enjoy I really love that so um you know that's kind of th- that's kind of the main ways um that I that I get books get book ideas I listen to that podcast like I said what should I read next there's been a couple other podcasts that I've listened to but I haven't really found any others that I really love love yet I really like Ann Vogel's podcast um and then uh, oh and she also just wrote a book actually Oh, she, I think she has multiple books, but I just read her new book called Don't Overthink It, and I really enjoyed that too. I listened to that on audiobook. Um, and then, like I said, the Facebook group, and I do go on Goodreads sometimes too, because they'll have, like I said, they'll have like, you know, what what's popular now in this genre or whatever, or, you know, based on what you've read, you might also like this. So there's definitely ideas in there too, but I always have way too many books on my list than time to read. So I, I never have, um, I never feel like I'm, at this point, because I've gathered so many books that I want to read just from hearing um, reviews and podcasts and the Facebook group and stuff, I have like an overwhelming number of books on my list at this point. But there was a time when I really didn't know um, what books I might want to read. So anyway, I hope you enjoy reading because I know this won't be relevant, but I'm sure that there's a pretty good amount of you guys out there that hopefully enjoyed this podcast um, today, talking all about reading. So if you have any, um, any tips you would like to share, of course, email me, join our Facebook group. Um, we have a Facebook group at Lola's Frugal Life. Uh, I'm sorry, at facebook.com slash Lola's Frugal Life. I would love to have you there. Um, it's, it's still like a somewhat small group. We're just about to reach 100 people really soon. So it's still pretty small. Um, so I'd love to get more people to join because I just love talking to you guys on there. Um, there's a few members that are, we're getting a few more active members, so it's getting fun. We're having more, more little conversations, um, and, you know, just people like commenting and and talking and it's really nice. So come join us over there. Um, and, uh, that's it for this week. This is a little bit longer than my normal episodes, but I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you here next week. So thank you for checking in for this podcast episode. And don't forget, you can always email me with any questions or suggestions at lolasfrugallife at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at lolasfrugallife. And you can find a blog post for most of my episodes and definitely all of my meal plan episodes at lolasfrugallife.com. You can also join our private listeners group at facebook.com slash groups slash lolasfrugallife. And if you enjoy the show, please make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen from. And I would love it if you would screenshot the show and tag me on Instagram so I could see your listening. Also, if you can please take a couple of seconds to rate and review the podcast, those ratings and reviews are what help the show come up better in search results so that other people can find this podcast. So that will really help me in growing my audience. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you have an awesome day.